The Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial is such a mess. No one's gonna win, and we're the ones who are all losing. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. Now, this is actually a defamation case, but we're gonna be talking about it because there's so much stuff that's overlapping with criminal law, specifically allegations of domestic violence and illicit drug use. Now, this is a case that's really been in the news. The, the trial has been going on for six weeks and is starting to wind down. And I gotta tell you, I hate it. I really hate it. And it's not because I'm on Team Johnny Depp, and it's not because I'm on Team Amber Heard. I'm on neither team. I'm not hashtagging any of them. The fact is, the only thing that I really care about is the law. I am the law! And whether they're following it, and the damage to the law that this case is doing. That's right. This case is actually doing damage to the legal system in America and the way that people think about the court system. It's helping to further erode and destroy people's trust and faith in the justice system. First off, we've spent six weeks going over every bit of minutia in this case. And the fact of the matter is, we are being bombarded on the news, on social media, on TikToks, with little clips, cutesy, funny clips, abound with everything going on with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. We've heard about lots of fighting going on. There's been allegations of pooping in the bed and blaming on the dog. And a lot of this stuff, it's salacious. It's even kind of funny sometimes to some people, even though the fact is there's really nothing funny about domestic violence, uh, which is another way that this case is causing harm. It's allowing us to treat this really extremely serious topic in a way that's not serious at all. And it lets people just sort of go on whatever side or team that they really feel strongly about. It's a defamation case. Johnny Depp has sued Amber Heard for defamation. Now defamation is basically telling a lie about someone, but it's telling a lie about someone in such a way that causes harm to their reputation and causes actual financial damages to that person. They have to lose something or suffer in some way that you can count, that's quantifiable. And there's generally three things that someone would have to prove in a defamation case. First, they have to prove that someone made a statement about the plaintiff. You said something about me. Number two, that statement was defamatory. It was false and caused harm to their reputation. You said that I have this terrible disease and then I lost out on this job. Or you said that I'm a thief and now no one will hire me and I'm losing all this money. That's a defamatory statement. And then the third part is finally that you have to actually prove the damages, that the person has suffered economic harm as a result of that defamation. When we're talking about the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case, let's just talk about what the actual facts are when it comes to this defamation case. Amber Heard wrote an op-ed in a newspaper in which she claimed to be a victim of domestic violence. She never once mentioned Johnny Depp by name. The allegation by Johnny Depp and his lawyers is that even though he wasn't mentioned by name, it still implied and referenced the fact that he must have been the one who committed domestic violence based on the context of her op-ed. Even though she didn't specifically name him, he still can argue that there's sufficient evidence that it identifies him even if he's not mentioned by name. This is an issue for the jury to sort out. It's for the jury to decide whether or not the statement actually identified Johnny Depp. The second part is whether it's defamatory. And here's where things get really dicey. Truth is a defense to defamation. If someone made a statement that harms another's reputation, if that statement is true, that's a defense and it's not defamatory. If someone is a convicted thief, if they were convicted of theft, someone reveals that and that harms their reputation, the fact that it's a true statement is a defense. As it applies to the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case, the question then is, were the statements that are allegedly about Johnny Depp even true? Then the third part is, were there any actual damages? What was the economic harm suffered as a result of the defamation? Now, this is also going to be a little bit tricky and both Amber Heard and Johnny Depp and their lawyers will have plenty of arguments to make. Johnny Depp's argument is of course that he lost out on all kinds of movie deals. 
He's not gonna get to do Pirates of the Caribbean 18 or whatever the heck they're up to. He got cut out of those uh, future um, Harry Potter spinoff movies, even though he got paid for one of them. So he's gonna claim that he suffered economic damage. Amber Heard and her lawyers are of course claiming he was already on a downward swing. He was already having reports of bad behavior on movie sets, being difficult to work with. He had uh, problems with drugs and alcohol or substance abuse that might have been interfering with his ability to get these jobs. And that there were other things that were at play that it had nothing to really do with what was put in the op-ed. So that's really it. Those are the three things that they have to talk about. The first and third element are probably the easiest things for them to, to kind of straightforward argue about. Were they talking about Johnny Depp? And did he have any economic harm as a result? And there's probably arguments on both sides for them. But it's that second element that's going to be the, the real heart of the matter. And it's kind of what, what angers me the most about this whole stupid case. And it's the question of, was it defamatory? Let's pretend for a second that the other issues aren't issues anymore. Let's assume she did name Johnny Depp. Amber Heard was talking about Johnny Depp and Johnny Depp lost money specifically because of those statements. So one of the things that's so obnoxious about this case and why I think that the case has totally become a circus is there's been so much time, weeks devoted to things that don't tend to prove or disprove whether or not Johnny Depp ever actually abused Amber Heard. Specifically, there's been so much attention to allegations that Amber Heard herself committed abuse against Johnny Depp. At risk of this being misinterpreted, I kind of say, so what? I don't mean so what to minimize domestic violence, certainly not, and I don't mean to minimize violence perpetrated against men. The question of so what pertains to what does that prove? We know that there are plenty of men who are victims of domestic violence, and we know that domestic violence is not necessarily always one-sided. If there are two people in a relationship, it is not always the case that just one person is an abuser. There are abusive relationships and toxic relationships where both people abuse each other. That's not to say that it's right. It's not. And people in those situations desperately need help and assistance. They need to break the cycle of violence. From a legal perspective, however, Johnny Depp did not sue Amber Heard for abuse, for battery, or any kind of violence. He's suing her for defamation. What does whether or not Amber Heard ever abused Johnny Depp have to do with whether or not she was telling the truth or lying? What if the jury believes both of them? What if the jury believes both Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? And you know, that's possible. Sometimes that happens where juries kind of believe a little bit of both from each side. Well, in that situation, the jury should then really find in favor of Amber Heard, not because they're on Amber Heard's team or they believe that she's innocent of ever abusing Johnny Depp. That's not the issue. If they believe that Johnny Depp ever abused Amber Heard, even just once, then the statement was true and not defamatory. The claims that Amber Heard herself may have abused Johnny Depp may certainly be legitimate and deserve their own scrutiny, don't actually tend to prove or disprove the defamation itself. And that's an important distinction. And it's one of the ways that this case has gotten completely off the rails. We've lost sight of what the actual narrow legal issue is. And by being able to bring up all of these other things and muddy the water, it's turned the case into something it's not. I don't understand why the court has allowed all of that other irrelevant information to come up. It doesn't really seem relevant to go into all of these other issues of abuse pertaining to Amber Heard. But one of the other things that I think the court could be doing better is having the witnesses and the parties control themselves. Now, as an aside, it's not uncommon that if a person is in court, whatever the case may be, you're not supposed to be making faces in court. We've been introduced to the many faces of Amber Heard and Johnny Depp and their lawyers. And it's not just the natural reaction or crying that one would expect in a trial like this, but laughing, giggling, and rolling of the eyes. The court really should have done a better job and being more strict in following those rules. It would help cut down on the courtroom performances because make no mistake, 
they're not just performing for the court. These people are performing for the TV cameras, for the people that are in the audience, that are out in America and in the world watching this. I'm sure that Johnny Depp is very cognizant, as well as Ms. Heard, about how this case may impact their future employment and their future prospects. They are trying to convey messages non-verbally sometimes, but it's not appropriate. The result is that it feeds into the confirmation biases that people have. People are lining up into camps. People are Team Johnny or Team Amber. People are saying that this is about whether or not men can be victims of domestic violence or that men are wrongly accused of it. But then there are others that say, no, this is about women victims of domestic violence, that we should trust women and believe them all the time. This isn't about teams. It's about following the law. And again, this is a case about defamation. It's a case where Johnny Depp is claiming that he was defamed with false allegations of himself being a perpetrator of domestic violence. Everything else, for the most part, is a lot of noise. And this is causing harm to the legal system because now you've got these two camps. You've got Team Johnny and Team Amber where every bit of information that comes out, every video clip, every news story confirms to that side what they already believe to be true. I'm not much of a betting man, but I would be willing to place good money that 99.99% of the people that are on one hashtag team or the other have not actually watched the entire trial. Even if you've watched every single thing on TV and you've read every single aspect of the trial in the news, the way that you experience the trial is not the same way that the jury experiences the trial. Because the jury is not reading analysis about the case. They're not watching talking head pundits on TV and the internet giving their opinion about this one time where Amber Heard like choked up on a word, where Johnny Depp turned around and made a comment. They're not analyzing it to death the same way that we are with echo chambers reinforcing. It's actually very common where people get surprised by a jury's reaction. They'll say, did that jury even watch the same trial as us? And the answer is no, they didn't. We get to see things on TV unfiltered. If there's an argument or an objection where they're saying, we don't think the jury should be allowed to hear this, the jury's not gonna hear those arguments. They're not hearing about the evidence that's being discussed, whether or not it's allowed to be admitted into evidence. But those that are watching on TV and the internet, they do get to see that. And so it's not unusual for the general public to have a very different opinion about a case than the jury that's actually assigned to it. And that's what's gonna happen here. No matter what the outcome, you're gonna have a huge number of people, whether it's Team Johnny or Team Amber, that are now upset, thinking this was a mockery of justice. This was a miscarriage of justice because obviously Johnny Depp is the abuser and Amber was telling the truth, or obviously Amber Heard is a liar and Johnny Depp is the innocent victim. It's all black and white and no shades of gray and it's all salacious and it sells clicks on the internet, right? It's getting people to want to follow the story. It's funny to talk about that someone pooped in a bed, but at the end of the day, it's a distraction from what the real legal issue is. And it's turning this legal case into entertainment. We're seeing famous actors talking about really personal, embarrassing stuff. And it's also because it's entertainment allowing us to take a subject such as domestic violence, which is serious and is real and affects men and women and everyone in between. It is a real issue that people suffer with. But when we turn it into entertainment and we can make jokes about it, and we assume that this person is lying or that person is lying and it fuels our narratives, it really weakens other actual victims of domestic violence. It harms other people that are wrongly accused of domestic violence. It's getting people to be further deepened and entrenched into their own beliefs and positions where they're unwilling to consider evidence, even if it's evidence that is against what they believe. This case has just been a ridiculous spectacle where we're talking about things that have nothing to do with the issues. It's turning a very serious legal case into entertainment. People that are now looking at this and trying to discern, you know, and read the tea leaves about what's going on, 
because the court can't even have people follow basic decorum is harming the legal process. As much as all of the other politicized debates about the Supreme Court or leaks about um, pending cases, all of those things harm the courts and the faith that people have in the courts. Because no matter what the outcome, people are going to believe that it was corrupt, that it was a mockery of justice, and that the wrong outcome occurred, that the, the courts didn't follow the rules. And to an extent, there's some truth to that. They're not maintaining the rules and they're not treating it the way that other cases should be treated. This is a really important case for what the consequences will be. And it's certainly an important case to Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. At the end of the day, it's a defamation case and it will have consequences for the people that are involved. It'll have consequences for how defamation cases are proceeding, but it's definitely also going to affect the way that people feel about the court system and, and their preconceived notions about the courts and about domestic violence, that the legal system and the courts should be dispassionate, that they shouldn't be using our own biases to resolve cases, that we should allow ourselves to have an open mind regardless of our preconceived notions and make a decision based on the law and the evidence itself. And I think it's clear anyone who's been watching this case for the last six weeks plus knows that the decisions and the conclusions people have reached are not based on keeping an open mind and having it based purely on the evidence. It's not being treated as a serious process. It's being treated as entertainment. And court cases are supposed to be a little bit boring for just that reason. Court cases are supposed to be about dispassionately applying the law to the evidence. And so when you have this kind of situation where the case has gone off the rails and has turned into a spectacle, we all lose. That harms everyone who has an interest in having a legal system that treats people equally and where people come to it working in it with an open mind. You know, if you're gonna watch the, the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case, you can do that. In fact, you probably can't avoid it. If you use Facebook or Twitter, I promise you, you're probably gonna see something posted about it today. If you watch the news, you'll probably get an update about that. But try to focus on what the real issues are. In the case, it's defamation but focus on what matters in the court system. Focus on the law, on the evidence, and having an open mind, and forget about the teams. Join me and go on Team Constitution, Team the Law, the law. and forget about the hashtags for either side. Because when you want justice, justice equally applies to all. It's not about just one side. Whatever the outcome that occurs, hopefully people accept it and it is a just and fair outcome based on the law. My fear is that no matter what happens, people won't accept it. Be sure to like this video. We've got plenty of more videos coming. Make sure you like and subscribe to the Lucid Legal channel. And if you have any comments or questions, please be sure to post them below. And hey, you never know, one of your questions may be asked in a future video. If you have questions about the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case or any other case in the news or even a TV show or any other questions, please be sure to post them below.